and we will get started. All right, so this should be a, probably won't use the full time here, this will be a quicker webinar, but we wanted to go through some of what we've added for the Easy Insight connection to Katana to help you get the most out of tracking your inventory, your sales, your purchases, and more. First, we've updated the pre-built dashboard to help you better see what are the sections that are available to you for default reporting out of Easy Insight. And so in this case, we see our, we can kind of see just high level overview, trends, inventory, batches, so on. We can click to jump into any of the sections. Uh, we covered this in our previous webinar, but just as, as a reminder, for anything in the pre-built dashboard, you can click to jump into more details. So if I click on, the or on this orders bar for August of 2021, it pulls up details about the orders that make up that data. So the order number, the date, the status, the customer, the product name and SKU, the quantity and the amount. Everything can be fully customized. If we jump over into say sales trends, here we have a default comparison of our sales in May per, per product as compared to our sales in April, along with the percent change. We can adjust the filters to say, let's look at January to June compared to July to December of last year. We can sort, identify which products have the best change across those time periods or which products have dropped off. All right, now on the inventory demand side, we've made quite a few quite a few changes here. So I wanted to spend some time going through this in detail. With this report, you have your different variant IDs or SKUs. Then we have added, we merged class into this report. What this is doing is grouping it up so that your top, so that the top, the products that make up the top 80% of your sales are classified as class A. The next 15% are classified as class B and the remaining 5% are classified as class C. We could filter this to only show the A products, B products and so on. We, we can kind of see our, we can see our quantity values. For quantity expected, we can click to drill in and see what are the incoming purchases and incoming and in production manufacturing orders that together make up this quantity expected. We can click on quantity in stock to dig into the individual locations and if appropriate batches that make up that, that particular SKU. Here we're seeing the sales quantity in the time period in the dashboard time period. We're seeing the average demand per day. We're seeing the out of stock date, co combining the average demand with the quantity in stock. And we're seeing the days of remaining inventory. If we click on the variant ID or SKU, this takes us into a detailed dashboard. In this case, it's showing us the total quantity month over month that has been ordered of this. We can go one step further and click to pull up the individual SOs, which together make up that date, the sales for that month. We've also added inventory material demand. This is going to be very similar to inventory demand. Note that instead of sales quantity, this has total quantity. This is a common request that we get from Katana users. Total quantity calculates the total quantity required to manufacture the products that were sold in that time period. So for example, when I look at iron here, this one, it's required, we, we've needed 13,869 units 
to manufacture all the products that use iron as part of their bill of materials, either directly or as a, sub, as, or as a subcomponent. If we click here, we see the total quantity again. And if we click on that month's data, we open up the SOs, we can see, okay, these are the different pieces of the bill of the recipe that together calculate out to that total quantity. So you can use this to kind of double check the values that's showing you, as well as identify where, you know, where the uses of that ingredient have come from. If we jump over into product info, it also shows us the details around what recipes use this, use this ingredient, as well as the stocks of those, the stocks, costs, sales prices, so on, of those items in the recipe. This whole side of things is one that we have gotten a lot of requests for. So hopefully this will help drive a lot of value as far as your forecasting and understanding not just the requirements of your products, but of the materials that go into manufacturing those products. You can also look at what the incoming POs are that are tied to that product and so on. We jump over into customers. We're able to take a look at our lifetime value of customers, first order date, last order date. We can click to jump in and see what the top products that customer has purchased are so on. On the sales side, we have the views as far as where our orders are coming from. In this case, whether they're manually being put into the system or whether they're coming in through the integration with WooCommerce. All right, here on the orders report, this is just kind of a table of your orders data. Let's see, we have then our purchases overview, kind of giving us a general idea of purchases. This hasn't really changed too much from what we had previously. Again, same kind of things we did on the sales side, identifying how trends are changing with lead times. Same thing here on the manufacturing operations. Again, hasn't changed too much. The batches side hasn't changed too much. I'm just kind of helping you identify which batches are expiring, what the value of those batches expiring is, and so on. We've moved inventory movements to kind of the upper level of the dashboard. Otherwise, it hasn't really changed, but this allows you to look and see quickly see, okay, what are all the movements tied to a particular batch, tied to a particular product, so on. And these movements could cover everything from SOs, POs, manufacturing orders, stock adjustments, stock transfers, and so on. All right, we've also added a validation section. In this case, our data doesn't have any examples, but it's looking for SKU for products that don't have any sales. So just things that can be useful to try to you know, clean your data up within Katana. All right. So next, I wanted to go ahead and do more of a deep dive as far as building custom reports within Katana. First, we've added some tags here that can help you identify the fields you're looking for within Katana. Since by default, there are quite a few folders here, especially if you're coming in as a new user. If I click on sales, it filters it down to the fields that are relevant to the sales side of Katana. So if we open up products, we can choose product name. We do that, it automatically is added to the report. If we open up variants and choose SKU, we, we, add, we add SKU into our report. So given that you can have multiple variants to one product in Katana, that's why you do have the two folders there. We can also add category name from products. We often see people reporting on that. We could create a filter on category. There's a couple of ways to create a filter, but as a simple one, we can click on category name, do create a filter on the field, choose multi-value. On the filter, we'll click all. We'll go ahead in this case, choose um, bar, 
and it pairs it down to the three items that may meet that filter criteria. Now we'll do choose field again. This time we'll open up sales order lines and we will choose line total in base currency. Now what this field is showing you is the dollar value associated to that line in whatever the base currency of your Katana system is. So if you're using multi-currency, this will help you, this will automatically show you the value in your currency. On the other hand, the sales order line total, this will be in whatever the, cur the currency is of the customer. So that could, there could be some variance there. We do recommend for reporting purposes, you'll typically want to use line total in base currency. Same sort of thing here. We have price per unit and we have price per unit in base currency. We also have quantity, which will give you the, quant the sales quantity of that SKU. To create a filter on a time period, we could choose create filter. If we go to sales orders and choose order created date, that's going to give us the date of the order. We have multiple types of date filters here. In this case, we'll go ahead and choose range. We'll choose month year, and it pairs it down to the orders that were created this year. All right. Next, we'll go ahead and create a report on stock. So for stock, we can open up inventory. We can first choose SKU again, choose product name again. So there's those, since product and variant pretty much apply across everything. This time we'll go ahead and open up inventory and we can choose quantity and stock. This automatically rolls up the quantity and stock of that SKU across all of your locations within Katana. If we choose value in stock, that's going to do the same thing. Automatically roll up that value across your different locations within Katana. We could do the same thing, adding quantity committed to see how much is committed to existing orders, quantity expected to see how much is incoming in purchase orders or manufacturing orders. All right, next we'll go ahead and create a report on manufacturing. Within manufacturing, the ma you have all of your standard fields on the manufacturing order. So you can see what the, you can pull in the manufacturing order number, you can pull in the material cost, the operations cost, the sub assemblies cost, the total cost, total plan time, total actual time, uh, production deadline date, fields along those lines. We can also look at data across operations or across operators. So if we pull in operation, there we see here, in this case, the three manufacturing operations we have in our data. If we look at total actual cost, what this is doing is automatically summing up the operation cost per operation across all time within our Katana data. We could do the same sort of thing here to say, what are, what was the operation cost for operations that were completed in the last 30 days? All right. Um, we can also pull in data around the operators both assigned and completed. So general stuff to help you report on your manufacturing operations. And we have purchasing. So as far as doing calcul looking at data of your purchases, you can look and see the, when, the order, when the PO was created, who the supplier is, what the purchase order total is, um, so if we pull in the purchase order number, there we have our list of POs. 
We could create a filter on purchase order status. Only looking at received or only looking at not received. So for our open purchase orders, we can look and see what are the products that are, that are tied to those POs. What's the quantity and so on. We can change the report visualization by clicking on list. Here we see the different report types that are available to us within Easy Insight. So if we look and see, let's change that a little bit. So here we have a chart of what the outstanding, the outstanding line quantities are of our different SKUs. We can look at a cross tab and see, look at outstanding by expected arrival date. In this case, they're all set for July, but we can look at, we can look as well to see if we change it over to received and look at last PO line received date, that's going to be the date that they were that the item that those items were received. To save a report, all we do is save it, we'll give it a name. We can get back to the report here from our Katana data source, clicking the edit link next to the report name. We can do export. We can export the report to Excel, to PDF, to Google Sheets. We can email the report. We can set up the report as for scheduled delivery. So every Monday at 7 a.m. receive this report. You can embed the report or the dashboard so for example, if we wanna go back to our original dashboard, especially if we take a subset of this dashboard, you could do export the dashboard, embed dashboard, and then put that on a TV screen on your shop floor. Uh, often we see situations along those lines. You can connect Katana to, or you can connect, connect Easy Insight to a variety of other systems to, add on top of your Katana data. So you could pull, if you also use BigCommerce, WooCommerce, Shopify, ShipStation, Xero, QuickBooks Online, we have connections to those as well to help you combine everything together. All right, I'm gonna briefly open up for any questions, but I think we'll probably be pretty close to wrapping up here. While we see if there's any questions, um, Let's take a quick look for anything else that I need to cover. All right, it doesn't seem like we have any questions. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and say, I hope you enjoyed this webinar. The recording will be posted online. If you have any other questions, please reach out and we look forward to you trying EC Insight and Katana.